A newly released report has claimed that the 44th president of the United States is a CIA creation. American investigative journalist Wayne Matson says Barack Obama, as well as his family, including his parents, stepfather, and grandmother, had connections with the CIA. America, tonight, if you feel the same energy that I do, if you feel the same urgency that I do, an exceptional orator, promise for the disillusioned, and change from the status quo. These are all what helped. Barack Obama to become president two years ago, but now the reality seems to be something far from that. In what is being called a bombshell, investigative journalist Wayne Madsen has revealed in a report that in 1983, President Obama worked for the Business International Corporation, which was a CIA front. The company used to conduct seminars with the world's most powerful leaders as agents abroad with CIA espionage activities. Madsen says this intelligence connection runs in Obama's family. Obama's maternal grandmother, Madeline Dunham, was one of the first female vice presidents of the Bank of Hawaii in Honolulu. The report says this bank was also a CIA front for funneling money to oppressive dictators and rulers, such as former Indonesian President Suharto, who came into power through a CIA-backed coup. In the 1960s, Obama's father had been selected by the leader of Kenyan African National Union, Tom Mboya, to receive scholarship and be airlifted to the University of Hawaii. CIA files indicate that Mboya was an important agent of influence for the agency. The airlift was a CIA operation to train future agents of influence in Africa, which was a battleground between the U.S., the Soviet Union, and China for influence. As a Kenyan student in the University of Hawaii, Obama's father, who was already married and had a child with another on the way in Kenya, met Obama's mother, Ann Dunham, in a Russian class in Hawaii. This meeting eventually led to their marriage. Barack Obama's mother, Dunham, was divorced when his son was four. She married Lolo Satoro after meeting him at the East-West Center at the University of Hawaii, the center affiliated with CIA activities in the Asia-Pacific region. She worked for Tim Geithner's father, Peter, at the Ford Foundation, widely believed to be a CIA front. Now, Madsen is questioning that if Barack Obama as is suspected, was subjected to the CIA project, either by brainwashing or being part of it, then it'll become problematic for an American president. He says if Obama has been brainwashed, then he can be controlled, and if he was simply part of this project, then he can be bribed. Most of the activity of that department was to compile huge amount, volume of information on individuals who were instrumental in creating public opinion. Publishers, editors, journalists, uh, actors, educationalists, professors of political science, members of parliament, uh, uh, representatives of business circles. This was my instruction. Try to get into, into uh, large circulation established conservative media, rich, filthy rich movie makers, intellectuals, so-called academic circles, cynical, egocentric people who can look into your eyes with angelic expression and tell you a lie. These are the most recruitable people, people who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or too uh, suffer from self-importance. Uh, they feel that uh, they, they matter a lot. Uh, these are the people who KGB wanted very much to recruit. Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do, is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. It's a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activni meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. The 
demoralization process in the United States is basically completed. The result, the result you can see. Most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically, America is stuck with, with demoralization, and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality. People who think they are living at a peacetime, false. United States is in a state of war, undeclared total war. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. If this is what will happen in the United States if you allow all the schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kinds of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition and to put a big brother government in Washington DC with the benevolent dictators who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. He will go to Moscow to kiss the bottoms of, of new generation of Soviet assassins, never mind. He will create false illusions that the uh, situation is under control. Situation is not under control. Situation is disgustingly out of control. After crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Nor so the next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. And the small town of Hue in South Vietnam, several thousands of Vietnamese were executed in one night when the city was captured by Viet Cong for only two days. And American CIA could never figure out how could possibly communists know each individual where he lives, where, where to get him, and would be arrested in one night, basically in, in some four hours before dawn, put in a van, taken out of the city limits and shot. The answer is very simple. Long before communists occupied the city, there was extensive network of informers, local Vietnamese citizens, who knew absolutely everything about people who were instrumental in public opinion, including barbers and taxi drivers. Everyone who was sympathetic to the United States was executed. Same thing was done under the guidance of, of the Soviet embassy in Hanoi, and same thing I was doing in New Delhi. And that's what happened in Nicaragua, it happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada, the same happened in Afghanistan, the same happened in, in Bangladesh. But it's the same pattern everywhere. The moment they serve their purpose, all the useful idiots are used, either be executed entirely, all the idealistically minded Marxists, or uh, uh, exiled or put in prisons, like in Cuba. Many, many former Marxists are in Cuba. Because, you see, the useful idiots, the, the leftists who are idealistically believing in the beauty of Soviet socialist or communist or whatever system, when they get disillusioned, they become the worst enemies. That's why my KGB instructors specifically made the point, never bother with leftists. Forget about these political prostitutes. The psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents.
uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. But to eliminate the others, to execute the others, don't they serve some purpose? Wouldn't they be no, the ones they, to rely they on? They serve purpose only at the stage of destabilization of a nation. For example, your leftists in, in United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, the, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. You have literally several years to live on unless the United States wake up. The, the time bomb is ticking, that every second the disaster is coming closer and closer. Unlike myself, you will have nowhere to defect to. Unless you want to live in Antarctica with penguins. This is it. This is the last country of freedom and, and possibility. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, nothing ever can help the United States. You may kiss goodbye to your freedom, including freedoms to, to homosexuals, to uh, prison inmate, all this freedom will vanish, evaporate in, in five seconds, including your precious lives. The moment at least part of the United States population is convinced that the danger is real, they have to force their government. And I'm not talking about sending letters, signing petitions, and all this beautiful, noble activity. I'm talking about forcing United States government to stop aiding communism. We shall never surrender.